Hello, everybody. Formal casting here for AEL High School Esports. And today, we're going to try a new experimental segment where I'm going to take a play that caught my eye and one that I believe we can learn from from our first week of action in these high school esports. Now, it was an exciting day yesterday for our three teams. In particular, the one that caught my eye was when Christian Brothers College had a bit of the mirror match. It was CBC1 versus CBC2. And in game number two, CBC1 was already up 1-0, coming into the kickoff when this happened. Uh, Hawker, tough team to beat. So I think right now we are really seeing these players showcase their ability. Uh, can you hear the cars? That being said, we're on to game number two. We're on to the game. The lethal knows where it's at. He has two AOC monitors. Would highly recommend. I can actually vouch for that. Would There's recommend. A miss there in net. Ruben will be there to follow it up. Good to see this pressure coming straight back out there from CBC2. And yep. In case you're not aware, we are actually missing the gameplay right now. But don't right. worry. My bad. We'll it get to it. Properly, so when I actually went uh, through the highlights. And to see I'm going to let Tins finish. Put that one away. <laughs> I'm not going to talk over Tins. Okay. But no. Uh, this is important. So when I went over the highlights, actually, I didn't realize Tins had actually missed this play. It's okay. It's a mistake. I make it as well. That's not why I chose this play. Uh, why I chose this play is because within the first 19 seconds of this game, we saw exactly why kickoffs are so important, why being fast, why positioning is important, and how you can effectively set up and find a counterattack off of a, what times looks like a bad situation. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break that down right now, have a deeper look at what happened, because again, I got that replay, so we can do that. So, we're just going to get rid of uh, the stream right here, go straight to the game right now, and first things first, uh, let's go to Director Cam, so we can get an idea of what properly happened. So we start this one off. CBC 1, I believe, is in blue. CBC 2 is in orange. Kickoff initially goes in 2's favor. Steel Justice looks to chase it up in that corner, but you can already see a second attacker immediately behind him. Awkward miss in front of the goal, yet the third player was a little bit too slow in finding the play. A little bit of an unforced error in that corner. Next thing you know, Phase Fusions on that breakaway. Had the pass if he wanted to. Doesn't actually need it. Puts it himself. 1-0 lead. Pretty straightforward, right? Your initial impression of that one was like, oh, well, the only reason why they didn't score was because, you know, they had a couple unforced errors. They missed the ball. Uh, yes, there was a situation, but they just weren't quite fast enough. And it, unlucky. It, it was unlucky. Uh, however, I'm not going to say that's the case. In fact, I'm going to challenge that notion that everything we saw was unlucky because when we go back and we actually look at this play from the player's point of view, we can see a few key things that CBC2 can do to slightly adjust where they'll actually hit that goal in the future. So we're going to go right on back to the start. We're going to go off that director cam and actually go to our player cams. Oops, kind of overshot it right there. All right, there we go. Um, Fate, yeah, we know you're good. We'll get to you. We'll get to you in a second, mate. But let's start with um, Binny Boy. So on this kickoff right now, what's going to happen is Binny Boy is going to explode apparently. But no, more importantly, Binny Boy is actually going to start this thing off. Cut here, visual glitz gets the boost, and right now, this is correct. Okay, I'm actually happy where Binny Boost is now. I'm not sure he needed to use the boost if he was going to go for the jump. Probably a little bit unnecessary, but we can address that at a different time. Right now, considering where the ball is, you would be expecting Steel Justice. I don't know why I'm pointing. Um, actually, wait. Do you see my mouse by any chance? No, you don't see my mouse. Okay. So right now, you would expect, you're expecting Steel Justice to sort of either be looking for a bump on phase, wrapping around behind in that third man. You have OCE has, who should be pressing up potentially into that corner. Because you have two blue side attackers who are already gotten in front of the ball, uh, you can also see that their car is probably not actually aligned uh, as we take a look. Yeah, so phase fusions might be able to get there first. That's fine before has, but probably not likely. Uh, strong guy. He's kind of got his back to it, so you can press up and challenge. Same thing with Ruben the Legends. And, I mean, in this situation, yeah, you would kind of expect Haz in prime position to press forward. At least try to read that first touch. I would say just just continue to play forward, get that uh, pressure moving. Um, so we'll go back to bid. Uh, so in this situation, you would be expecting this player right here to sort of be staying 
middle of the field, maybe just above that midfield line, essentially close enough to react in case um, one of either Strong Guy or Ruben the Legends gets to the ball force, pushes it more towards mid. You want to sit in mid. There's a good chance you can get that read and actually put in a shot right there. Um, obviously, so far, okay. Um, I would have liked Bin to be a little bit further forward, but because the two uh, defenders, I don't know why I keep pushing, pointing, but because the two defenders actually have kind of started to fall back right now, the ball is actually kind of bounced in an awkward spot. We'll kind of go back and watch this again. Like, watch how both of the two attackers turned defenders on that blue side kind of got in that awkward spot, and they each kind of slow it down, and they're almost trying to read the play. Now, Haz really can be pressing forward right here. You know Haz has the boost. You can jump forward, bounce that ball through the corner, and right now, Benny should be going straight towards the net. Uh, this would be the fastest, most effective way. Uh, the moment you kind of see defenders off balance or out of touch, and you are closer to the ball with boost, with momentum going towards it, you can be in a position to challenge right here. Um, instead, though, what happens, Ben kind of slots himself in the side, uh, in the corner, which is good. I would have liked tighter spacing, again, because of the fact that the defense are kind of forced to try and slow the play down if they're going to get a touch. If you're going to be playing the corner right now, uh, you would need two things to realistically happen. Uh, you would have needed Steel Justice to have continued to wrap around and instead be playing the mid instead of being stuck in the corner right there. Um, so you would have liked to see that. And you'd also like to see Benny, I think, a lot closer up for that tighter spacing because you're not going to see a powerful touch or challenge right now unless you get sort of that freak pinch. But even if you get that freak pinch, it's going to be going back across the middle where, in theory, you would have wanted Steel Justice. We can look more in Steel Justice in a bit. But because Steel Justice didn't, do that long wraparound. Instead, it's kind of cut in that corner and it's coming around from the back. Benny, at this point, should be the player moving toward the center because what happens if Phase Fusion hits Haas? Uh, you would get that pinch across. Uh, the ball would probably wind up behind you and you see a breakaway situation. Uh, instead, what we see is Benny slows down and now when the ball is moving towards the goal, well, he wasn't in position. He didn't commit for that play earlier and now he's going to be a little bit too far behind. So even though Strong Guy is going to miss... He's not in position. And again, you can accredit his lack of position, again, from going back to the start. Steel Justice, after that kickoff, really didn't need to go for the ball. Uh, I think that's the big thing. Steel Justice, at that stage, we can go back to a communication right now. Steel Justice actu actively believed that uh, Steel Justice could have gone to the ball first. Could have called off OCE Haas. Haas could have called off Steel Justice say, I'm backing away. I think a better play for Justice, if Justice wanted to push forward, would have been looking to bump Fusion, and then you would have had that situation where Justice, again, would have been wrapping around on that right side, would have been able to go for that middle play, and it would have opened Binny in a situation where Binny could have started pressing forward now, looking for that corner through setup. A little bit too slow, unforced error. Could have been fixed with a bit more aggressive posturing, a bit more aggressive positioning, and a little bit of a cleaner rotation. Uh, in this situation, and you could have found that goal right there. Now, let's, um, oops, that's the wrong button. Let's go to Steel Justice, and we can talk about this kickoff again, because I want to go a little bit more on Steel Justice. Three, four, all right, kickoff. So, yeah. This is why Steel Justice felt like he could go for the ball, right? Um, balls press forward. Kind of that good situation. Has a look. No one's playing that corner. Two defenders are going back. It's very much so, Steel Justice could have gone to the ball. The only issue is Steel Justice doesn't have boost. And at this exact moment, where Steel Justice is committing for the play, has, with the boost, two members on the blue team not driving towards the ball, um, should be calling Steel Justice off. I, I feel like this should be Haas's play to move forward and get to it at the time, just for the notion that Justice didn't get boost. In fact, seeing that boost in the corner, I, I think that's why Justice actually moves for it. And while it's good to steal that boost away in that situation, again, I don't feel it's warranting the position, especially considering you still have that side boost um, on the right side, which Steel Justice could have peeled back for, been able to cover the mid. You have, again, has able to push forward uh, with, of course, good old Benny, who's already setting up to drive behind Haas in that corner. Uh, so it's just a case of miscommunication, double committing for the ball two seconds in, which is going to have them out of position for that later shot. Uh, we can then sort of see what happens with Steel Justice here. Presses forward. All right, you know what? I'll steal the boost away. That's well and good. At this stage, I need a wrap around back. 
And here is where you need to be adaptive because they committed for that boost. That is the stage where Bin... Mini should have been going mid, should be attacking towards that goal right now. Steel Justice is in a fine position where that, like, it's not ideal because beating a dead horse would have liked him to, whatever. It's not ideal, but Steel Justice is in a position where even if you see a clear, unless it's like a pinch that goes straight towards the net, um, which even then there is still a chance that Benny probably could have made that read, uh, Steel Justice will be rotating back. So Benny actually can look to attack right here. Uh, assuming that things will get across. Like, worst case scenario, Steel Justice can kind of feel down. How does Steel Justice play? Yes, Steel Justice was committing to the tight rotation, um, which I also feel probably could have been rotating a bit further back. I understand wanting to play tight, but that was because Binny wasn't tight. Uh, and instead, you got the situation where at this stage, you have, like, essentially all three members of the orange side kind of on that left side. Yes, Binny is going for the goal now, but it's a little too late. And just... Not having a clear idea of what they want to do on the kickoff, not understanding the spacing, not communicating who is going to go for what in what situations leads to, unfortunately, this, where you don't get the goal. So now, let's go the other way. Let's look at our blue side. So blue side, of course, phase fusion. You've got yourself strong guy, 3-2-1, and you've got Ruben the legend. Um, and I believe phase fusion is the one who scores the goal. So we're going we're gonna to watch phase fusion's perspective first and then sort of break it down. All right, two, three, four, five. All right, phase fusion. Falls back to the corner, kickoff, has the read, sees both of his defenders. Okay, hold on. So got the corner boost, all well and good. At this stage, sees both of his other defenders are now in front of the ball. So really, it should be phase fusion's role. He's thinking, I need to get to that corner. I need to make that, I need to go back on defense at least. I need to make that play. Both of my attackers are now in front of the ball, so they're going to probably be needing to rotate behind me or trying to do something. Uh, if we were expecting a little bit more cohesion, there's almost a situation where you could have been playing for the back pass, actually, in that situation. However, you don't want to trust, because you're going to be assuming that they're going to be attacking right now, as you can see Steel Justice gets there. So, FaZe is probably thinking, I need to get to that corner and challenge. However, as soon as he realizes, hold on, Steel Justice isn't making a play for the ball, and I have a defender that's going to get there first. Hit the brakes. Don't get in my teammates' way. We're already in a really awkward spot because both Strong Guy and Legends each decided to kind of commit for it. So now, once again, we sort of have everyone in the same corner. I need to probably make the read and then, yeah, I don't. So, yeah, I think at this stage, Fusion was probably expecting Ruben to actually hit the ball a bit more centered. So the reason why he's kind of more here is you can do a tight turn to the left, try and bang it straight down. But Ruben misses the ball. And I love the reaction from FaZe. Immediately, like, the second that ball is missed, you see OCE has coming. FaZe needs to do something to disrupt the pass in theory. Uh, typically, when you see this situation, you would be expecting Binny already to be moving towards uh, the net, not really beating a dead horse. Uh, but yeah, so he's thinking, okay, I need to stop the setup. It's a swing and a miss. Unforced error one, unforced error two. Blue side gets quite lucky. Uh, so how they could have sort of done this one better goes back to the initial kickoff. Uh, strong guy. Let's have another look at what strong guy does right here. Looks okay. Hold on. Uh, sorry for that moment of pause, but I just want to see something. All right. So something I'm going to address right away. It's not unusual to stay on ball cam immediately after hitting the ball. Uh, th this might seem unusual because a lot, or sorry, sorry, stay on car cam immediately after hitting the ball. Uh, this might seem unusual because for a lot of players, it is very much, you know, you go ball cam, you stay ball cam. It's all well and good. The reason why sometimes you, after hitting the ball, you go to car cam is so you can understand where uh, your defenders are. Like, it gives you more visibility. You can get a better sense for the pitch. And I expect him to switch. Switch. All right. That said, staying on car cam that long makes things really difficult. I don't know if this is a glitch of the replay, though, because he gets himself positioned right in front of that goal right there. Uh, if it's not a case of being on ball cam, I think actually being on ball cam throughout that would have given him a better idea of where to position when in the goal and where to make the stop. This obviously was not the point I was trying to make. This is something I just discovered right now. Uh, very unusual, but you can see, like, 
how hard it is to make that read when you don't know when exactly that ball is coming. You're kind of running on instinct right here. Turn around. Whoop. Too late. If you're on ball cam, you're a lot more prepared to sort of make that play. So I think a uh, quick tip for strong guys, perhaps learn how to understand that ball cam a bit more, understand how it can allow you to have faster reads, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's hard to start read. Let's go with Ruben the Legends real quick. All right, so there's the kickoff. Now, again, that's a Vizio bug. There is a full boost right there, which Ruben does get to. Unfortunate read. I don't feel Ruben necessarily did anything wrong right here in terms of positioning. Teammate makes the miss. That's okay. Tries to play through. Uh, maybe aggression could have been used in this situation. Didn't need to play patient, but the ball was already safely passed. So really waiting underneath and finding that touch. Yeah, Ruben played this very well. Uh, I very, very well play by Ruben. Conserve the boost. Like, that's a mistake I would have made. I would have rushed for the ball right there, straight up. I would be thinking, cool, open field. Let's just try and bang it into that corner. Instead, he conserves the boost, still winds up getting more. Gets that touch underneath because of the second unforced error phase. Fusion's able to fall through underneath and find that goal. So, the big thing right here, again, if we're going to take something away from this play, I mean, this is just a counterattack, essentially. Uh, Ruben stayed behind the ball, read the situation, found the pass. Um, meanwhile, our good friend Phrase Fusion, after making that read in the corner, sees Ruben's going to be... This is actually interesting. Because uh, it looked like Phase Fusion. All right, hold on. I want you to pay attention to the speed, actually. That's, this is where we're going to be going at. Uh, I want people to pay attention to the speed when everyone actually starts to approach the ball. No one's coming at this with full boost. That's how come Phase Fusion is allowed for the tight spacing behind. Uh, when there's low speed going forward to the ball, that means it's going to be a bit more of a dribbler. And that means you can afford to play tighter. Phase Fusion does just that. Makes a nice read, finds that breakaway. Again, he could have passed it to the middle, could have taken himself, had the options at that stage. Counterattack, goal. And the big reason why they found that much space, while they were able, why they were able to sort of find that clear for the most part, orange side, they kind of overcommitted to the kickoff at the very start of the game. Um, two people goes for the ball. In the end, Binny Boy too slow on that shot and unfortunately has had the right idea rotating back, but went boost, not ball. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Um, that's a really weird read, actually. So, don't go boost, not ball if you can see your two other defenders in front of you. Uh, that That's kind of what happened right there. I'll chalk this one up for an unforced error right now. And case, point, game, set, match perhaps. Either way, Fades Fusion escorts that one all the way through, gets the goal, and there you have it. A 1-0 lead for CBC1. Now, as you can see down below, you can see that sideline. They will go on to win this game and this series 3-0. But final takeaways. Communication on kickoffs is key. Understanding roles, understanding where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, uh, any situation off of that initial touch of the ball. And this is something that you can pre-plan. This is something you can talk to your teammates and be like, okay, if we're starting in this situation and the ball winds up here, my role is to collect corner boost, guard mid. My role, go look advanced, look for that bump. My role, I'll be the ball chaser. I'll look to challenge the defender or the attacker when it steps up here. Little things like that. Having these pre-plans, having these... So go to a coordination before you get going and you'll find more success on kickoffs. You'll find yourself being the more proactive team sometimes. And who knows, maybe next time, instead of, you know, being that little bit, that little bit too short when going for the shot, you'll be forward next time. You'll be there. And Benny Boy will be putting CBC2 up 1-0 to start off this second game. Now, this has been a little bit of experimentation. Please provide some feedback. Please let me know what you think if this was all at all helpful. It might have been a little discombobulated. It might have been a little disjointed. But that's okay. This was the first time. You know what? It's my first time as well, all right? I'm not necessarily used to being a coach, okay? I'm, I'm normally the yelly, shouty guy, not the coachy guy, all right? Coaching is hard. That's why you usually get professionals, but I guess that's me now. So we're all in trouble. Either way, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you all on the pitch.